Thanks very much, uh, Riley. You really appreciate that intro and um, almost forgot to unmute. So there's always a challenge, yeah? Hopefully you can hear me okay, Riley. Yes, I can hear you great. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. Okay, good. And um, really great being here this afternoon. Um, it may sound like it's all about us, but it's about you guys um, and ladies out there in Perth, Sydney, Johannesburg, um, Luanda, and even Barbados. And that's really fantastic to be here. So um, without any, I'm just going to um, go through the um, section I'm doing, which is obviously the introduction. Um, Riley, just to change the slides, um, I think you need to give me control, don't you? Yep, you can change the slide in the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah, actually. I'm just trying to do it now, but it says, can you change it for me? Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so um, just if you just go to the beginning, that would be good. Thanks. And then, um, yeah, you should sorry. be able to. You should be able to control that, Steve. Yeah, um, I've just got a um, annotate button on it, unfortunately. But um, just if you just don't mind stopping for me, that would be really good. Thanks. So um, what we're going to do is just talk a bit about our history. And then, um, as I said, it's really about, there's a few themes through history. And, and history is probably gives you a bit of background to us. But it really echoes um, the need for engineering education to be job focused. So you will see that most of our history is reliant on big companies such as BHP, Rolls-Royce and Derbyshire, running short courses for them. And um, we sort of started in about 2008, which is about 14 years ago, in terms of actually offering formal qualifications. And um, latterly, we offer all the way from advanced diplomas up to um, doctors of engineering. So there's a huge range of courses, but again, all the time, it's all about um, jobs, 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 and that's probably our underlying focus. Um, the platform we're using now is probably an example of what we're trying to do all the time, looking for new technologies to connect up with you guys and ladies in a very interactive way. So just providing videos, and uh, without the interaction is obviously something which we try and avoid. So that's why we're trying to encourage you to make comments and we will respond to those. We want a, what we call in engineering, a full duplex connection in both directions. And the other thing, again, throughout the last 30 years, we've always focused on experienced instructors working in industry or who have a huge empathy for industry because that's what we believe is important. And I mean, we've got um, instructors all over the world, from Perth to Johannesburg to um, Barcelona, um, you know, in Spain, um, Texas, Detroit, all over the place. And the students, obviously, you students are from 160 countries, which is again spectacular. Our biggest challenge, of course, always with students in different parts of the world is inevitably the time zones and that's always a bit of a challenge but um, we get around that by having multiple sessions and then um, last year we um, won the national award for education against all the universities so that's um, obviously a um, big um, driver for us um, is obviously trying to make sure that our education is credible. So we always enter in competitions and trying to get some um, benchmarking going to show that we're actually serious about delivering high quality education. Right, do you mind just giving you the next slide? Thanks. <clears throat> so the... Um, Sort of, um, if I can just um, give you a quick view of some of our history, and um, I'll just key this quickly. Um, 
we started in 91. And uh, as I said, we presented courses all over the place. And the um, um, sort of com companies, uh, Rolls Royce, and um, running short courses, 60 to 70 on site courses every month was pretty horrendous, but that was actually flying people around the world um, and hugely expensive for clients and hugely draining for instructors. Um, and about 40, 50 public courses a month from Detroit to London to even, guess where, John O'Groats. And there's a nuclear power station up there, which we run a few, quite a lot of courses up. And um, lots of brochures, lots of bad effect on the climate by running so many, um, doing such direct mail. And then, of course, um, 2008 is when we really started off with the online model. And the online model has been going for 14 years. So we had a lot of experience. We learned something new every day. And um, when we went to the Australian government, the regulator said, look, we want to offer a master degree online. They were horrified. They said, no, 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 you can't do that online, mate. You need to do it in a classroom. So we've been really very strong on the online uh, model. And even in our classroom courses, we still use a lot of online technologies. And probably at any time, and my good colleague Natalie will probably have the precise numbers, but um, she's a statistician of note here. Yeah? But typically anything between um, three and a half, four and a half thousand students at any time. And doing certificates, which are very big for CPD, it's continuing professional development, diplomas, advanced diplomas, bachelor, master, and doctoral degree. So really, um, thanks, Natalie. Uh, for, I'm sure you'll comment about my stuff later on. And um, doctoral degrees, again, we try, and, and it's very hard when you're doing research, but we try and interview my colleague, our Deputy Dean will give you some more detail there, but we try and have an applied model. So it's really trying to look at applied research rather than just um, blue sky research. Blue sky research is important, but we're trying to go one step further and look at the actual application. So some of the research done with real on the job stuff is really incredible and it's amazing. Um, Ryan, could you pop the next slide? Thanks. <clears throat> okay, good. Thanks and your team as well. And obviously, um, some of the aspects here, um, which are obviously important. Um, and I don't know whether Indu wants to add to here, but um, my good colleague, but basically, one of the focuses obviously is that we're specialists in engineering. So you get universities offering some incredible courses in medicine, the arts, and business, but we are unashamedly just focused on engineering. That is our whole driver. As I've repeatedly said, we try and focus on job focused programs. Industry is really important. It is hugely challenging actually. It's probably more challenging than having um, theoretical programs because you because the, the job market is changing so fast and technology is changing so fast. So our resources team led by Danielle has to really race to the nth degree to keep the materials up to date. So it's a real challenge. And then um, obviously students out there want to make sure that it's accredited education. There's some benchmarking going on. It's not just some mumbo jumbo stuff. So we really put a lot of effort into getting um, Australian accreditation and we're working on accreditation in other countries as well. And as I said before, industry experience lecturers, um, our academics on campus also have a strong uh, input in the industry as well. So it's really important. And then um, we try very hard to use the latest technologies, but we try and make them as interactive as possible because we believe that no matter how high tech you are, it's all about people. So that is really, really important. And people hands-on is what it's all about. Even if you are online with a high tech platform, it's all about people. 
So just giving someone a video and saying that's a training course is completely unacceptable. It goes far more than that, we believe. If you could swap the side writing, thanks. <clears throat> and I'll clean the... Um, why undertaking an engineering qualification is a great decision? Well, <clears throat> um, this is obviously something which the students will be considering at great length, you guys out there. Um, you know, is this a good thing? Um, always a big question mark. And a lot of us say, well, should we go into business? Business people are earning a lot more money. They seem to be having a great time there. Is engineering the right place? And it's a question one should ask every day. Oh, am I on the right track? Um, because life and business changes dramatically all the time. You can go to the next slide. <clears throat> um, the um, state of play for engineering. Um, obviously, one of the challenges, and people often question engineering as a career because it is quite tough. It's not an easy career. And my good colleague, Indu, will probably give some further detail here, but it's not an easy thing. I mean, just think about all the numerical analysis you do. Um, very challenging. Um, and you're either right or wrong. If you design a bridge, you don't design it sort of half-heartedly. You actually have to make sure it is a credible design with integrity and it has to be a measurable outcome. But it's a very practical hands-on career. So it's really great building things, creating things, I believe. Um, and as you would know, remuneration is generally good um, because it is a challenging career. The other great thing about uh, engineering, which I find quite interesting when you, when you study law in Africa or Australia or the States, you generally are confined to that particular country. And uh, if you're doing medicine, for example, same thing. You know, it's very hard to move from country to country. Um, whereas engineering, there's two main groupings of standards, or probably three, I suppose, but two main groupings, European IEC Australian model, and then there's the IEEE, which is the uh, American model. But they are moving very, very close together. So the standards are very, very similar. And I'm always quite surprised when I'm in the States and they're using feet, pounds, inches, and then very quickly they'll swap across to meters and centimeters and millimeters. So you can work anywhere in the world. And that's one of the beautiful things about engineering. And it's great because you have these multidisciplinary teams all over the world. Um, you can achieve something significant in your career, um, building a structure, creating something, huge opportunities. Um, there's lots of challenging, painful problems often in work uh, where there's multiple solutions to the problem. You have to think about online learning. You know, often, you, 10 years ago, the thought was if you did a degree, mate, that's me, trained up for life. Well, unfortunately, it's ongoing. And I find it quite useful because it's great to be able to keep learning new stuff. I think it's fantastic. Um, You've got to also build up your skill set so that you are distinguishable from everyone else. So you're very reasonably unique, very important. And one of our guys that founded EIT was a guy called Dick Morley, amazing guy in, based in Boston in the States. And he founded a trillion dollar business um, with what they call today programmable logic controllers. I mean, he designed it on the back of a cigarette box and took it to General Motors and created a whole industry. So there's huge examples of engineers out there creating industries, new areas, apps. So it's a very, very exciting um, area to be in with your training and your education. You can go to the next slide, please, Riley. Thanks. I'll just clean that. So I'll pass on to my good colleague, um, Indu. Um, she will take over at this point and 
She's the deputy dean. So Indu is, um, will introduce herself, but she focuses 100% on the academic side and focuses on getting high quality um, engineering outcomes. And I often think sometimes she's probably herding cats in many cases. But anyway, over to you, Indu. Thank you very, very much for tuning in and uh, pass the baton to my good colleague, Indu. Thank you very much.